It's the new year. You've eaten and drunk your own body weight in Turkey and Prosecco, and now you feel as fat as a house. You want to lose weight, but where do you start? The dieting industry is a billion pound minefield of information. The average British woman shells out 25,000 pounds on diets in her lifetime, yet one in four Brits are still obese. How on earth are we supposed to know what actually works? Well, pay attention, because we're going to tell you. Welcome to Diet Secrets, How to Lose Weight, the series that gives you the skinny on what's making us fat and the surest way to successfully be the size you've always wanted to be. We've assembled a crack team of scientists, doctors and dietitians to give us an inside scoop on the secret to dieting success. People are always looking for the magic wand. It's definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach. It really angers me. Much of it is nonsense. We also follow a group of celebrity dieters hoping to lose weight on the latest diets. I've never heard of these before. Will they crack? Chocolate. Or stay the course? I absolutely hate it. And crucially, will they actually lose any weight? So whether you're a salad dodger, a chocoholic, or a gym bunny, tonight we reveal the fascinating truth about diets and how to succeed. Welcome to Diet Secrets How to Lose Weight, your one-stop shop for dieting success. This week, we're going from supersized to supercharged. Over the next hour, we'll be exploring the truth behind the biggest myths about superfoods. We will reveal that your smoothies could actually contain more sugar than your fizzy drink. When we talk about blending fruits into drinks, I absolutely think we can be, without knowing it, without realising it, be putting dangerously or worryingly high levels of sugar into our diet. Some everyday foods might be more super than we think. I'm only aware of one food that I would describe as extremely nutritionally balanced, um, and that's milk. Prioritising calories over nutrition can have serious side effects. I would have the shakes morning, lunchtime and night. And why our weight isn't necessarily a good indicator of our health. Someone who is 5 feet 10 and 10 stone, they could be achieving that by smoking 20 cigarettes and starving themselves. We'll also have Bianca Gascoigne testing a diet rich in superfoods. These are goji berries. I don't even know if I'm saying this correctly. Everyone's talking about superfoods. Our favourite chefs are cooking with them, and we're constantly being told that eating certain foods can slow down the ageing process, make us thinner, boost our physical ability, and even our intelligence. But what actually makes a food super? And it's very hard to study foods individually. It's incredibly difficult. Certain foods, I'd probably say blueberries are probably the one that spring to mind, tend to have a huge amount of health benefits. Are they superfoods? It depends what you mean by superfoods. The healthy foods, can eating more of them uh, improve our health? Yeah, for most of us, probably. Superfoods are acclaimed for being full of antioxidants, which are thought to protect the cells in our body from damage. But with new foods regularly being elevated to super status, and celebrities such as Victoria Beckham waxing lyrical about exotic sounding mackie berries and bee pollen, does what we're eating live up to the claims? Often these foods can be very expensive, they can be very trendy, so it doesn't necessarily, just because something's expensive or hard to find, doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Superfoods, by definition, tend to come from other countries where it's warm. I suspect that uh, we might think a goji berry or something from Brazil is a superfood, and in Brazil they probably think broccoli from Northamptonshire is a superfood as well. Pretty much any food could be called a superfood. So you think of any fruit and vegetable, how can you single out one over the other? It's a bit like taking the alphabet and saying that the letter Q and the letter T are super and the rest are not as super. You need the whole of the letters of the alphabet to communicate, just as you need a wide spectrum of foods to be healthy. So my idea of a superfood would be a food that was extremely nutritionally balanced. And I'm only aware of one food 
that I would describe as extremely nutritionally balanced, um, and that's milk. Everyone knows milk contains calcium, which is good for our bones, but it's also full of many other critical nutrients, including high quality protein, essential fatty acids, and vitamin D. There's a genetic trait that enables us to drink fresh milk without getting an upset stomach. And it turns out to be more advantageous than any other trait that we've evolved in the last 10,000 years. I think we've got a good idea that there are some foods that are incredibly healthy. You know, if you want to call it a superfood, call it a superfood. If you don't, fine. We've enlisted TV personality Bianca Gascoigne to road test our next diet. It's sensible advice to speak to your GP before trying a new diet, and Bianca has been given the go-ahead by her doctor and will be having regular checkups throughout the experiment. But before she can get started, she needs to go through a stringent health assessment at Westminster University by research scientist Polly Alwyn. Nice to, nice meet, to you. meet you. Hi. Polly will use the latest technology... This is so funny. ..to measure Bianca's body composition and metabolism. When she's done, a nervous Bianca gets her results. Hello. Please tell me it's good news. <laughs> the first result is her BMI, or body mass index, a measure of body fat based on a person's height and weight. What we found, looking mm. at your BMI... Yes. So is... you came in within the healthy range. So you That's normally good. want it between somewhere between 18 and 25, and yours came in at 23.7. Okay. Um, a glucose test checks how well the body processes blood sugar or glucose. The results of this test can indicate whether you have any metabolic problems that might make you more likely to put on weight. Oh. From your glucose test, we can see that you've got a normal fasting glucose level. Oh, well, so I was kind so... of hoping you were going to tell me yeah. that there was something wrong, because I feel like there is, but... No, yeah, maybe yeah and that isn't. came in fine as well. OK. Your visceral fat was really low. You only had 0.3% which, as long as it's under 1.5 litres, that's fine. OK. Visceral fat, basically hidden fat that is stored around internal organs, is considered a major contributor to heart disease. So the fact that Bianca's is low is excellent news. So it's all looking very good. Thank you. <laughs> because Bianca's BMI and body fat tests were within the healthy range, she doesn't actually need to lose weight. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So her diet won't be about cutting calories. It's time for Bianca to find out which diet she's going to be on for the next four weeks. What is it going to be? Oh, it looks interesting. OK. Superfoods. Unlike our other celebrity dieters, Bianca's diet will be about adding to, rather than cutting back on, what she already eats. With well-being rather than weight loss in mind, we're going to see if including more superfoods in her diet can supercharge her health. Bianca, given your excellent results in the body testing, you will not be going on a diet. Rather, you'll be adding certain superfoods to your diet to see if you enjoy any of their claimed benefits, such as highlighted energy levels, which I need at work, better mental focus, yep, definitely need that, <laughs> improved fat distribution, and even better complexion. Each day during the test, you will try a number of these purple powders, super greens, and mega grains in addition to your normal diet. What I know about superfoods is that they're super. <laughs> they do really good things for your body. Coming up, we find out whether superfoods will be as good for Bianca's body as she hopes. We've been led to believe that we need to be pounding our bodies non-stop with antioxidants, otherwise we're going to die or we're going to put on weight. Absolute rubbish. <laughs> Welcome back to Diet Secrets. Tonight, we're delving into the claims surrounding superfoods. So we've asked Bianca Gascoigne to eat a diet rich in these culinary superstars to see if they live up to their health-giving hype. I think these are goozy berries. I don't even know if I'm saying this correctly. Um, but I'm not too sure what they're good for. So these powders, we've got turmeric. Oh, that's good for your digestion, I know. Um, I've actually taken these in pill form before. I was told that would help your metabolism on that one. Let me smell this, because I want to know what that is. Oh, it doesn't smell that great, but I'm sure it does great things. And then, obviously, is this haddock. 
I love fish anyway, so fish is like my favourite thing to have, so I'm guessing this is haddock. I am actually really, really pleased with this diet. The lifestyle I lead isn't very healthy, so this is going to be good. I'm intrigued and looking forward to seeing what the benefits are going to be. TV personality Bianca Gascoigne grew up in the public eye as the stepdaughter of footballing legend Paul Gascoigne. I've become so aware of dieting that's because obviously I was quite a chubby kid and I used to get a little bit picked on at school, so I was aware of it quite at a young age. You know, when I, that's the thing, I've got body dysmorphia now. When I look at myself in the mirror, I always see the chubby kids. Like, whatever weight I am, I will always feel that way, if that makes sense. Despite her glamorous image, Bianca has always struggled with body confidence. My body dysmorphia started when I was about 18. I did become a bit anorexic. I was like working out three times a day, really being very strict on my food, and I lost a lot of weight. Everyone was saying to me that I looked really ill, but I actually thought I looked the best I've ever looked, and then it's just stemmed from that. I just don't, I don't know if I can ever be happy. Hopefully I can feel healthier, but I just don't know if I'm ever gonna look and be like, yeah, like everything's, but I think that's most women, I suppose. In 2006, she won the first series of Celebrity Love Island. But in the emotionally charged bear pit of the island, her weight quickly became a cruel stick to poke her with, clearly causing Bianca a great deal of distress. It was really quite intense of people focusing on my weight. The media just like to pick out the bad parts rather than the good parts, which isn't the best. It would be nice if they were more nice. <laughs> I've tried so many diets in the past. I've tried the 5-2, I've tried just a soup diet, I've tried the lemon detox diet, which you don't eat anything for five days, just lemon maple syrup and water. Um, anything and anything that I can try to make me lose weight, I will try it. As well as her TV career, Bianca also manages an exclusive gentleman's club in Mayfair and finds that working nights makes it hard to keep a balanced diet. Because I run a club, my eating pattern is really different to everyone else's because I start my work day at 6 p.m. and then it goes on to like 6 a.m. and you need to have a bit of energy to boost you through the night because working nights does drain you. It's really hard to find good food at that time of night because as you can imagine, it's kind of only things like pizza and kebabs and things like that. So it's, it's really not a healthy way to obviously live. Hitting the ground running on day one of her new regime, Bianca has swapped her morning coffee for a superfood smoothie. It's my first morning on the superfoods diet and I'm on the go, so I picked up like a blueberry smoothie. Um, I do love blueberries, so I'm sure I'm going to enjoy this, but I will try and incorporate all the superfoods in my diet for the rest of the day. I'm always on the go, so I'm always picking up food, I'm always ordering food. So there wasn't that much prep for me, it was kind of just, that's just how I live anyway. So it was just making sure that I picked the right food rather than not the right food. I'm at work, so it's the salmon, um, you've got the broccoli and you've got the avocado and it does taste really good. It gets to a certain point at like, you know, at night that I need a bit of a sugar rush, but that's probably because you've had the sugar in the day and it, you lose your sugar level, so you have to pick yourself back up, but this is that substantial food that keeps you going throughout the night. The extensive health test we did on Bianca showed that she didn't need to lose any weight. But most of us don't have a friendly medical researcher with a body pod on hand, so our only alternative is to work out our BMI. But is this much talked about equation really the best way to measure our health? Body Mass Index, or BMI, is a measure that uses your height and weight to work out if you're at a healthy weight by dividing your weight in kilograms by your height in metres. For most adults, an ideal BMI is between 18.5 and 24.9. I think we've struggled over the years to find a way of measuring how fat or how healthy we are. We used to do it in stones and pounds, now we're doing it in kilograms. I mean, when I was a child, it was always, you knew how many stone you should weigh. And we're now sort of veering away from that in terms of, well, actually, weight may not be absolutely the ideal way of monitoring whether you're healthy or not. So you take two 10-year-old children and one is one weight and one is the other and say, well, you're not healthy and you're not. Well, there's all sorts of other things. One is taller. So BMI really takes into account weight and height. And by doing a very simple quick formulation, it gives you a single figure and you can tell if you're above 25, you're, you need to lose some weight. And if you're below 25, you, you're okay and you can maintain your weight. So I think it's useful as a measuring tool for how, uh, how your body is.
But just how foolproof is BMI? Certainly one of the limitations of BMI is people who have a very large muscle mass. I think there were figures that a couple of years ago of several rugby players who had a BMI that would, was obese, and they're obviously not. Um, I do think it's important to keep perspective. So for example, at the population level in England, where we know that BMI is rising, we also know that physical activity participation is going down. So at a population level, we are getting fatter. For some people, if they've got a very high muscle proportion, they will probably be heavier than someone with a less high muscle proportion because muscle weighs more. But again, some people find it incredibly difficult to put on weight and some people find it incredibly difficult to lose and they sit at, at different weights. Two people of the same height will be different weights and shapes and sizes, build, bone, density. Most people just know, just look in the mirror and think, I need to lose a bit of weight. <laughs> I wonder whether or not actually we're missing the point in terms of focusing solely on weight in that if we're actually interested in people's health we need to be thinking about other factors such as sleep but also exercise as well. What we tend to find is that if we just look at a person's BMI it tells us almost nothing about their health. Someone who is 5 feet 10 and 10 stone, they could be achieving that by smoking 20 cigarettes and starving themselves. They could be doing that by having a healthy diet. You can't tell. One of the big problems with BMI is the way we use it. It was designed as a population measure, and it's useful for measuring millions of people. Giving individual feedback to school children at 5 and 10 years old, telling them that they are overweight or obese based on a measure that was never designed to do that, is a blatant misuse of BMI. And that's a problem, because being overweight isn't necessarily bad for your health. If you've got a BMI of 25, 26 or 27, you're classed as overweight, but it's not likely that it's bad for your health, as long as you haven't got diabetes or other problems. And of course, as long as you're happy with your weight. I think more and more it's realised now that carrying extra weight being a health concern partly depends on where you carry it. So it's the visceral fat around the internal organs that we can't see that is actually the danger. Um, and you can be relatively slim, but still have a lot of visceral fat, known as skinny fat. And that's equally dangerous as being really overweight and having a lot of visceral fat. And so that's the challenge more and more. So we've learned that our weight doesn't necessarily reflect our well-being. But is there an easy way to tell whether we're at risk of health problems? The one I like is what we call our waist to hip ratio. It's dead easy to do, it's cheap, you could do it at your doctor's surgery, you could do it yourself, right? And you basically, you measure your waist and you measure your hip. And you, you do your waist divided by your hip, right? And basically you're looking for your waist to be lower than your hip. We know that that is a pretty good marker of your risk of getting problems in the future. So, do our experts think BMI is an effective measurement of health? In our survey, 50% think it isn't. Bianca may not have to worry about shedding pounds for her BMI, but the ones in her pocket are fast disappearing. So I'm coming to the end of my first week of the superfoods diet. So far, so good, finding it quite easy, even though it seems to be quite expensive. Obviously, eating stodge is cheap, but obviously having all these nice superfoods, and what I've got today is I've got some beetroots with some lentils and some avocado with some quinoa. So this is actually quite enjoyable. I don't know, obviously, ask me in my fourth week, it might be a bit different. Whilst Bianca hasn't been on the diet long enough to feel any benefit, some people claim that eating a diet rich in superfoods can not only improve your general well-being, but also prevent or even cure many diseases. In 2007, the EU banned the use of the word superfood to make claims that aren't backed up by credible scientific evidence. However, this hasn't stopped them being touted as miracle foods, not only able to slow down the ageing process, but even cure cancer. So over the past 10, 15 years, superfoods have emerged. This is usually a, a vegetable foodstuff that has a high level of antioxidants in it. 
So antioxidants are, are substances that fight free radicals in the body, and too many free radicals in the body we know leads to potentially things like cancer and aging because they can damage substances in our cells, whether that's proteins or DNA or other structures in the cell. And we don't want things damaging the structures in our cell, definitely. But that doesn't mean that we need a huge amount of antioxidants. Our bodies naturally produce antioxidants that work really well. Antioxidants are shown to mop up these things called reactive oxygen species, or free radicals. That works very well. Antioxidants are very good at that, and they will benefit the health of you as long as you are a petri dish in a laboratory. If you are a fully working complex human being, they have almost no effect. What anti having lots of antioxidants can do is make you go to the toilet a lot, because they tend to be water soluble, so they make your, um, your wee very valuable, but they don't really have a massive effect on your health. Well, we certainly have toxins in our system, both kind of from food and just from natural life, and certainly from modern life with you know, pollution. We, we have toxins in our system. Can we detox purely through food? No. My own opinion, I think it's marketing. I think we're all being drawn into a marketing ploy. I think if you can find a new berry and it's not poisonous and it's colorful and it tastes nice, Brilliant. Of course, fruit and vegetables have got antioxidants in them. Some fruit and vegetables have got more antioxidants than others. But we've been led to believe that we need to be pounding our bodies non-stop with antioxidants. Otherwise, we're going to die or we're going to put on weight. Absolute rubbish. A balanced diet is all we need with fruit and vegetables. So if we can get all the antioxidants we need from a balanced diet, what about the claims that specific antioxidant-rich foods can actually fight off diseases? There are some serious illnesses out there and there are some people that are writing books about, you know, almost curing yourself with these, with their, you know, peddling their diets and, and I think they're, they're quite dangerous. I think people like to hear, particularly if they're worried about a disease, if they have a family history of a disease such as cancer, I think it's natural and very human to want to say, well, OK, I'm going to just have broccoli every day or I'm just going to have this supplement because that's what we want to believe. Um, but I think it's really important to understand the whole evidence around the need for variety um, and a healthy lifestyle in preventing these diseases. Eating one type of food is not necessarily going to prevent heart disease on its own. Eating one type of food is not going to prolong life on its own. What you need is a complete rainbow. They talk about the rainbow on the plate, you know, so that your fruit and veg look like a rainbow. And that's what we need, is to have a huge variety of colour in our food, because if the food is coloured, it means it has different properties. So one superfood or two superfoods, no, but, but a rainbow. So, whilst eating a balanced diet seems to be more important to our overall health than any one specific food, there are some foods we can eat that are proven to help certain conditions. When it comes to heart disease, there are um, some clear, consistent evidence of benefit with certain foods that are going to protect the heart. So oily fish for its omega-3, other fatty acids that are found in vegetables and nuts, for example. And the way they work is they reduce the inflammatory response in the body that is linked to heart disease, as, as, as well as reduce the ability of clots forming. And that there's, there is some evidence for that, and then it's backed up by what we call clinical trial data. So for me, I don't think we should go down this superfood definition. I mean, what, if people eat healthy, nutritious food, then effectively all food is superfood. I think the only benefit to superfoods is if you've got too much money in the bank and you want to get rid of some, great, great way of getting rid of some of your money. I don't believe the whole superfood argument. So, do some superfoods have cancer-fighting qualities? When asked their opinion, a substantial 60% of our experts said no. Bianca's superfood journey is all about adding food to her diet rather than taking it away. Coming up, we hear the shocking side effects of cutting out too much food too quickly. I have a excessive stretch marks which do get infected. It's something I have to live with. I just wish I could go back and, and do it all again but really enjoy it. Welcome back to Diet Secrets. Bianca Gascoigne is in week two of her superfood challenge. And by now, the extra vitamins and minerals she's added to her diet by eating large amounts of nutrient-rich fruit and vegetables seems to be taking effect. So it's my second week on the superfoods diet. I am feeling pretty good. Um, my skin seems to be, you know, quite smoother now. And um, I've got this 
for my dinner, which is the super broccoli, spinach and pea soup. I'll probably have some little snacks during the night just to keep the sugar levels up. Some like blueberries and some goji berries, just to keep my energy levels up. At the moment, I'm feeling good. It hasn't been that tricky because I haven't had to like, you know, cut out carbs, which, you know, gives you energy. It's just adding the superfoods to your natural diet. So with the superfoods as well, obviously, there's some that I like more than others. I'm not particularly fond of the goji berries and there's like the turmeric powder that isn't so nice, but I've managed to buy that in a latte mix, which is actually quite nice because it's got cinnamon in it. So I'm trying to incorporate that through drinking it as a latte. It's actually really hot, but it's actually really nice. I think I've just burnt my tongue. <laughs> but no, it is lovely. I do enjoy, I, you know, I've done a soup diet before with literally just soups and just smoothies in the morning. So I do like a good soup, but it's, it would be nice to have a bit more like chicken and, you know, stodge in it really, because obviously this is just pure green vegetables. While Bianca's happy to use eating soups and smoothies as one of the many ways of adding superfoods to her diet, some people see them as a health panacea. And smoothies are said to aid weight loss, improve digestion, help you sleep better, and even build muscle and improve athletic performance. But are smoothies really the best way to get our five a day? Well, I think that there are loads of fads out there and blended foods and smoothies and juices are all just part of that. I think too often it's associated with miracle cures and it's associated with like, here's a really, really easy way to kind of get some nutrition into you, get this sort of healthy thing into you without really tasting it. <laughs> I don't, I, I just think I'd like people to actually be eating stuff and drinking stuff because they want to, because that's like a nice thing. You know, vegetables are, at the end of the day, they're nice things to eat if you cook them properly. I tend to say to people, if you're juicing something or making a smoothie, what does it look like before you juice it? Look at the amount of food there is. If you ate all of that, how full would you feel? And how full do you feel after you've had the smoothie? And that's quite a good way of thinking about it. You're better off eating the whole versions than you are having the juice and the smoothie. But it's absolutely fine to have a smoothie or a juice now and again. Nutrition is a journey. So if you're not eating any fruit and vegetables at all, and the only way I can get a vegetable into you initially is by you blending up your kale and adding some lime juice and an apple, then fine. Let's do that for a little bit. But then after a while, I'll be asking you to have less of the blended food and start actually looking at eating the food because that's where the real value is, in, is in eating the food as whole food versus blending it into juices and shakes. It's baby food, isn't it? It's liquidized food for babies. Why can't we just eat the whole food? Why do we have to blend it thinking it contains extra nutrients just because we put it through a blender? It doesn't. So, while blending does have some benefits, it's clear it's not the optimal way to consume fruit and veg. But with more people replacing meals with smoothies, can blending live up to those weight loss claims? Blended food has been shown to pass more slowly through the digestive tract than solid food. So in a study that was done, people were given a, a meal and another half of people were given the same meal but had been blended. And the people who'd eaten or taken the meal in the soup form were actually not hungry when the people who'd eaten the food started to become hungry again. So in terms of losing weight, blending food could actually be a good way of keeping your appetite under control for longer. I don't think there's anything more to it than that, though. I don't think it's more healthy in terms of mineral or vitamin absorption. I don't think it's any more beneficial in terms of anything else other than it passes more slowly through the gastric tract. It's interesting because for me, as a nutritionist and a dietitian, you should always eat your fruit or your vegetables because what you'll get is all the fiber and the sugar intact. So in terms of absorption, you're not gonna have sugar rush, et cetera, et cetera. When you use some of these machines that blend things, you're breaking up all those cells. So what happens is you're releasing all the sugar. So this is why fruit juice actually counts as part of your free sugar intake. Whereas if you eat an apple or a pear, that's not part of your free sugar intake because it's intact within the cell. Fruits in their, in their plain forms contain a level of sugar, but they're also self-limiting. So for example, if you're hungry and you eat an apple, you'll take in about 70 to 100 calories worth of sugar. 
However, if you start blending and making into smoothies, you're going to need about five apples, a banana, maybe some pineapple, maybe top it up with fruit juice to make it into a liquid. And before you know it, just in the process of turning fruit into a drink, you've put much more fruit than you would ever normally eat in one sitting, point one. And secondly, you've blitzed it all up into a much more readily form that your body can absorb because you drink it straight down into the stomach as opposed to if you have an apple, it'll take you, what, seven to 10 minutes to eat it and you'll be satiated because the satiation process involves chewing and swallowing and reaching the stomach and all of that can be you miss out with if you're blending fruit yourself so when we talk about blending fruits into drinks i absolutely think we can be without knowing it without realizing it be putting dangerously or worryingly high levels of sugar into our diet thinking it's just fruit but even though our smoothies may contain more sugar than we thought they're still better for us than fizzy drinks aren't they while you might think that a shake or a drink or a smoothie or something is more healthy than a soda sugary drink, you may be deceived. There's probably less sugar in the, in the cola. So is blending foods into smoothies good for you? The votes for yes and no were equal at 20%, while 60% of our experts weren't sure. Well, that's that sorted then. While Bianca has been upping her intake of nutrient-packed fruit and vegetables, she's also been including lots of oily fish, nuts and seeds into her diet. These are a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, the type of fat that's good for our health. But how does this new regime fit with party girl Bianca's busy social life? It's my night off, so I'm at an event. I'm actually in a hotel at the moment, but I'm still doing my superfood diet. So I've got my salmon again. I'm obsessed with salmon at the moment. I've got my tomatoes, so I've got a mixture going on. I think the only thing I'm worried about tonight is obviously, you know, alcohol to a minimum. And, uh, you know, I like to enjoy myself. Socially with the superfoods diet, when you go out with friends, I love my food. I'm a big foodie. Um, and I love to try everything. It was quite difficult in that respect, and it's difficult because you're watching your friends having the food that you want, and you're sitting there with your quinoa and your, just like your French beans and stuff, whilst they're having um, like the meats and everything that's not so good for you. While NHS advice for people wanting to lose weight is to aim for a steady one to two pounds a week by swapping high calorie foods for healthy alternatives, some people want a faster result, opting for more extreme methods which can have unforeseen side effects. At my heaviest, I was 18 stone. I was a size 24. I was not in a good place um, with my food. I would sit there and eat all day. Now a healthy 11 stone, 32-year-old Gemma Tremaine Bland has struggled with her weight most of her life. I used to eat loads and loads of crisps, biscuits, chocolate and cakes. I didn't ever want to leave the house. I just felt that I, I, was, I, was, I was a disappointment. And I decided that I had to lose weight and fast. I went on a 1,200 calorie controlled diet. Calories provide the energy you need for daily activities. Most women need around 2,000 calories a day to maintain a healthy weight, and the only way to lose weight is to eat less calories than you burn. However, a diet too low in calories can pose a serious health risk. It just seemed the most logical. You know, less calories going in, the more weight you're going to lose. The weight flew off. I was being a, a bridesmaid for my best friend. Originally, when I went for the first dress fitting, um, they couldn't do the dress up for me, which was humiliating um, but when I went back in those three to four months I had not only lost weight but the dress was too big for me which felt amazing and that at the time kind of outweighed all the other feelings I was having the feeling of tiredness and because it was weight loss it was what I always wanted after three or four months I'd gone from 18 stone down to about 15 um, I wasn't where I wanted to be not by any means. Um, I was, I had to shave my hair off at the side to cover up the fact that my hair was falling out. I was very miserable and it just, I, I couldn't carry on like it. I, I just, it wasn't something I could keep up indefinitely. So after a conversation with my husband one night, I decided I was gonna try and do things a different way. So 
I decided, right, I'm gonna try one new superfood a week. So I'd take myself off to the nearest health food shop and I'd have researched a new superfood and I would add that into my diet. And each week I was getting more and more excited about finding all these amazing facts about all these different foods. I was eating different exotic fruits. I was trying different superfoods, spirulina. I had discovered the powers of turmeric and I was juicing that on a regular basis. And it was exciting. And I was feeling healthier. I was feeling more energetic. And everything was just feeling really positive. And for the first time in my whole entire life, that felt better than the, the four stone that I lost. Although Gemma is now happy with her weight and follows a healthy lifestyle, she's still living with the consequences of previous crash diets. I started to notice that I was being left with quite a bit of skin. It is something that's, that's hard. It's there if you go swimming, it's there when you try clothes. Like I couldn't wear a nice little dress because it would be there. Even with the right stomach holding in underwear, it's, it's still there. I have a, excessive stretch marks, which do get infected. It puts me up a dress size. Um, and if I have to wear trousers, I generally have to wear them slightly more tighter fitting so they fit my legs. It's something I have to live with. I just wish I could go back and, and do it all again, but really enjoy it. Count nutrition, don't count calories. Lose it slowly. Just love yourself. By week three of her superfood diet, the extra amino acids from foods such as quinoa and vitamin C from kale and goji berries should mean that Bianca is feeling more energetic. It's quite early in the morning, I'm on my way to Liverpool for a meeting. So I've managed to pick up myself a little breakfast pot, which has got mango, it's got quinoa, yogurt, pomegranate, and pistachios and coconuts. There's quite a few superfoods in there. And hopefully this will kickstart my day. I've just finished the gym and I've picked up a nutty superfood, whole food salad. So it's obviously with cannelloni beans and um, broccoli, and obviously hummus is a superfood as well, so chickpeas. Right now I do feel a bit tired, but it's because I've just finished the gym. But um, yeah, all going well so far. Coming up, Bianca finds out the results of her four week superfood challenge. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> It's the final week of Bianca's superfood diet, and by now, she should be feeling the benefits. Hi guys, it's my last week of the superfoods diet, and I'm having my breakfast. So what I've got today is I've got blueberries and um, pomegranate and some Greek yogurt. I'm not gonna lie, I'm quite looking forward to the day that I can actually have a fry up, because obviously having these, I've been having porridge and yogurt with fruit in it every day so far, so it'll be nice to switch it up. Um, but I do feel good, I feel much more energised than I ever have done before, but I am missing um, some naughty foods. The superfood diet for me has been easy, if I'm going to be completely honest, because I haven't been starving myself. All I've been doing is been adding good foods to my diet that has been giving me energy. You know, the skin, the hair. I have extensions, so I can't tell if it's grown, but it certainly seems a lot silkier, and I just feel a lot healthier in general. I don't know whether that's a mental thing, because you know you're eating the good foods, but in all, it has been a really, really good thing for me. After four weeks, Bianca's superfood diet experiment is over. But did it have any impact on her health? She's gone back to Westminster University to undergo the same set of tests to find out. Bianca's previous results before the diet showed that both her BMI and body fat were within the healthy range, and she's hoping this is still the case. Time for Polly to reveal the results. Looking at your results, mm -hmm. so we saw that you did lose some weight, Perfect. almost three kilos, just under three kilos you lost. What would that be in pounds? So around 6.6 .6 pounds. Really? Yeah. I'm super chuffed with that. Literally, I didn't think it'd be that much. So I was really worried about coming in. <laughs> and then with the weight loss, we did see you dropping your BMI. Perfect. Um, 
and then your body composition stayed pretty similar. So you're still within a healthy range for your fat mass, which was all good news. Yeah, I'm, I'm chuffed with that. I really am. I didn't expect it to be six pounds. You know, that's quite a bit. So yeah. I'm pleased with that. I really am. I was worried. <laughs> I definitely think superfoods is the one. My skin, my hair, obviously my energy, everything's just improved. And I've lost weight on it, so it's been great. And I've been eating more, to be fair, because normally I'd have to do, like, a soup diet to lose a lot of weight, but clearly this one works. Bianca's not the only person to hail the benefits of superfoods. Between 2011 and 2015, the number of food and beverage products containing the word super grew by over 200%. So something's obviously working, but is it the superfoods themselves? We want to know if these foods really do have super properties, so we asked our experts their opinion on some of Britain's favourite superfoods. Take blueberries. Everyone knows they're super, right? When does blueberries suddenly become a superfood? Blueberry is a fruit that is healthy for you, contains some antioxidants, contains some vitamins, tastes good, and in moderation is good for you. When did that suddenly warrant the term superfood? There was a time where you could put blueberries in anything from a muffin to a loaf of bread and it would uh, achieve superfood status. And I think that's a perfect example of how the umbrella, uh, uh, the aura of having a good food can actually make us ignore the rest of what we're eating. Chia seeds are beloved of healthy types on both sides of the pond for packing a powerful, nutrient-rich punch with very few calories. In fact, according to celebrities such as Boardwalk Empire star Paz de la Huerta, these superberries are little superstars. Any tips for Britney Spears on getting her body back in shape? She wants to get um, back to... She should eat chia seeds. Chia. <laughs> okay. Chia. Uh, like... Keep up on, baby. Okay. Chia seeds contain um, a plant-based type of omega-3. What's interesting about chia seeds is they come with a very hard shell. So whilst people are taking in chia seeds thinking that they're really nutritious, for me, it's about knowing, you know, making sure that you're grinding them so you're actually able to absorb the, the goodness from them. But you can also get omega-3 from walnuts. You can get omega-3 from flax seeds. So there's everyday foods that you can have that give you the same nutrients as some of these superfoods. People tend to make this weird pudding out of chia seeds. It's one of the most revolting things. And I say we should eat a variety of different foods and you shouldn't demonize any food. I don't think that's a food when you make that pudding out of chia seeds. And finally, goji berries. These shriveled red berries, which have been used in Chinese medicine for over 6,000 years, are alleged to boost the immune system and brain activity and improve life expectancy. Goji berries are like slightly sweet rabbit droppings. Um, they're particularly unpleasant, I don't have much taste to them, um, but they are rich in vitamin C and because they're red they're going to have polyphenols in them. <sighs> Big deal, raisins do as well. Goji berries are just, you know, like, like any other berry, but berries are good, berries are, you know, packed full of vitamin C. They're good berries, but if you don't have goji berries, there's no need to not have the raspberries <laughs> if they happen to be available. So whichever berries are there, eat the berries. <laughs> So it seems we should take the health claims regarding some superfoods at least with a large pinch of pink Himalayan salt. But according to our experts, is there even such a thing as a superfood? 50% feel strongly that there isn't, 25% think that there is, and the remaining 25% don't feel strongly either way. Maybe Bianca should have the final say. After all, she has lost weight and feels healthier. Although we can't say for sure this is purely down to superfoods, as she did follow a healthy plant-based diet throughout the four weeks. My energy levels were better, my mindset was better, and I just felt more healthier. So it's, you know, it, it, you know I don't know if it's myth or not, but it certainly made me feel better. Next time, we turn our attention to crash diets. There are so many of them around these days. You could be doing anything from cutting out fats to drinking maple syrup to drinking lemon juice and all these sorts of things. We'll be revealing the secrets about fasting, cleansing and detox diets. Detoxing is a huge marketing scam. You do not need to do anything to get the body to detoxify. It's doing it right now. And Frankie Essex will be getting to grips with one of the nation's favourite diets. I've been called a chunky monkey on the beach. That was so embarrassing. 